Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, in this one we're going to be doing uh, checking for blocks in front of the player. So I'm going to explain why that's important, why we even need to do that in the first place. Um, but what you need to know about this is we are calling this functionality inside of tick. Um, now if you've seen my Unreal Engine uh, series, the first one that I did, I go over the tick function in tutorial number two. So if you don't know what the tick function is, I very highly suggest you go watch that video, otherwise you'll probably have no idea what's going on here. And in fact, you should probably already know some C++ if you're watching this anyway. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, oh yeah, I need to explain why checking for blocks is even important. So, we need to understand, like, say I, I'm mining this block, say I walk up to this block right here, and I attempt to mine this block. Well, I'm, how do we know, right? Like, how do we know that this is the block I'm trying to mine? Well, you might say, because you're looking at the block, right? But the game doesn't just know that. So what we need to do is we need to cast a ray, or do what is called a line trace, and we need to check and see if there's actually a block in front of the player. If there is a block in front of the player, uh, then what we can do is set that inside of a variable, and then when we try to mine the block, um, we can then modify that variable to do things like destroy the block, um, and so on. So, we have a variable that holds a block, we see if the player is looking at a block, and then if it is, we can assign that variable. That's what we're saying. Uh, if that all went right over your head, it should make a lot more sense once we've actually coded it in. So, let's get started on that. Um, so to do that, we're going to open up the Minecraft character here. And if you come into the .h file, right under where it says begin play, we're going to add the tick function in. So by default, our character doesn't come with a tick function. So let's add that. So virtual void tick inside of the brackets. You want to say float delta time. And then we're overriding that. If we scroll down to um, this little part here, I'm going to add a private section. So we'll put private. And I'm going to add a function void check for blocks. This is the function that checks to see if there's a block. And I'm just going to put a little comment here just saying um, check if there is a block in front of the player. Awesome. Um, the other thing that we need to do is because we're storing a block, we need to actually include the block class, so include block.h at the top of the header file. Um, go ahead and right click check for blocks, quick actions, and then select create definition. And that's going to implement the function for us. And because it's Visual Studio, it's taking forever, so I'll just get rid of that. Also, you guys won't have this line, but we don't need it, so just ignore that line. Um, okay, so once you've added block.h, you might have some problems compiling. What I'm going to do is just build and reopen Visual Studio. It's very annoying. Whenever you try to include a header file for me, it just crashes. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, if it happens to you, you might need to build and reopen, but anyways, yeah, uh, implement this function, so just right click, quick actions, create definition, and you'll now have this. Okay, and when this function finds a block, we need a variable to store that block in, so let's make that. Stores the block currently being looked at by the player. And so we'll say a block, current block. And that should be it. Um, again, if you have any troubles with trying to add a header file, I really have no idea why it happens, but you might have some troubles with that. Um, we're getting an error here. Oh, okay, what happened here is... We need to actually make the tick function. So where I uh, put this tick function, just right click that, quick actions, and create definition. So we need to create a um, 
a definition for this tick function as well. And so we're going to say that every single frame, every tick, we want to actually check to see if there's a block uh, that the player can destroy. So the first thing we need to do is call the super tick function. And then after that, we're going to say check for blocks. So every single time a new frame is drawn to the screen, go ahead and check to see if there's a block that we can destroy. That's all we're saying there. So let's actually write this, um, this function. So, uh, let's see here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is declare a hit result. So a hit result is when we cast a ray or a line trace, we need somewhere to store it, and we store it inside of what is called a hit result. So we'll say if hit result, uh, line trace hit. We'll then get the start and end traces. So to do that, I'm going to declare an if vector. Start trace equals first person camera component get component location. If vector end trace should be equal to the forward vector of the camera. So get the forward vector. Um, and then actually times that by reach, which we haven't made yet, and we're going to make that in a second. And then add the start trace onto that. So these two points that we've just made represent where the start of our raycast will be and where the raycast will come to an end. Reach is a variable that um, says how far in front of the player the player can actually reach. So I'm going to come in here and just under this block I'll put the character's reach and we'll put float reach in there. And now in the constructor I'm going to initialize reach and set it equal to 250, which is a pretty standard reach. But that means that in future we can actually modify the character's reach and uh, change that if we want to. Alright, so we have the start and the end traces. The next thing we need to make is the um, query params. So to do that we say collision query params, CQP I'm going to call them. And I'm going to say cqp dot add ignored actors or actor this, and that's all we need to do there. Now I think I might be called if collision query params maybe. There we go. That's what I had wrong. Uh, and then we just add the ignored actor to be this, and this is referring to the player itself. So we're just making sure that the raycast ignores the player. And that's really it. I think we can actually go ahead and cast the uh, line trace now. So to do that we get the world and then we just call the line trace single by channel function. We'll pass in line trace hit, start trace, the end trace, the collision channel, so E collision channel, um, and we're going to use ECC world dynamic. Don't really worry about what that means though. And then just pass in the collision query params as well. Now what we need to do is um, get a block, right? So, and then I'm going to call this potential block. Because we don't actually know if we've had a block yet. So we're going to call it potential block. And I'm going to cast into an A block. And I'm going to say line trace hit dot get actor. So we're basically saying, whatever actor we've looked at, basically, um, see if it's a block. Try cast it into a block. So if it was a block that we're looking at, then um, it won't be null. We'll check if it's equal to null. So um, we'll say if what we've looked at is not a block, then set current block equal to null pointer so it's not equal to anything uh, otherwise and then just like return so we know that what we're looking at is not a block and we can safely just exit the function now um, if it is not null so if we are actually looking at a block then set our current block value or variable equal to potential block so we've now got a block in front of the player uh, let's just proof that this works because we've built the function but we want to actually show people that it works so 
go into minecraft.h and make sure this says engine minimal here instead of just oh sorry engine instead of engine minimal once you've done that um just come back here and we'll say right under this line we'll say g engine add on screen debug message just copy the parameters that i put in and then we're just going to say um current block get name so if we are looking at a block this will get the name of the block and it will actually tell us what we're looking at so let's save this now and open the uh, engine back up and my compile button is missing it, i swear that happens so much uh, I'll, I'll be back i'll, I'll relaunch the engine and recompile all right guys i'm back so let's go ahead and hit that magical compile button and actually i'm sorry i oh i already compiled sweet okay so uh, if i haven't completely screwed anything up and we go to play let's go ahead and look at a block and as you can see it shows the block we're looking at on the screen block grass 15 block grass 10 um i don't know where block grass number one is we over here somewhere who knows but anyways we can uh, we can actually look at all the different blocks and we know that we're looking at a block now and that's really the first step to breaking blocks down once we know that we're looking at a block we can then mine that specific block also last thing i'm going to do just before we end this is come into the uh the character here and just um in the cpp get rid of all of the stuff above fire animation so get rid of all of this stuff we don't need any of that because we don't want to be firing any projectiles at least not yet not until we code in maybe a bow or something but right now we don't want to fire anything so now when i click we just do the the animation we don't actually do the firing or anything like that so that's uh this tutorial i know it's been a fairly basic one but this is very essential it's very important that we know what we're looking at um before we start actually breaking blocks so anyways guys i'll see you in the next video